And so take two. Okay, Amir, are you here? Please join me. Hello, Sin. Good to see you. And I'm just waiting for Amir to join. That's the second attempt. I forgot my earphones the first time. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, all right, so maybe I'll introduce the initiative. Okay, hello, hello. Okay, hello, Amir. That, okay, go E. Waiting for Amir to join. La, 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 la. The world of technical advances is beautiful. Hello, Massimo, again. <laughs> Waiting for the inner workout to join. Okay, let's hope that it works. And we actually get Amir uh, on the streamline. Anyway, I will start with the introduction. Welcome to the lockdown economy. Um, this is a social nonprofit initiative that aims to support entrepreneurs, small business owners, and self-employed professionals all over the world in their um, fight with the pandemic and for, for survival of their business. And uh, today, okay, let's try again. And today I will have a, hopefully, I will have a guest, um, Amir Carmel, who I already... Hello, Amir. Sorry for the technical issue. Okay, so... No um, well, welcome to the Lockdown Economy. I'm very happy to see you, Amir, and I'm very happy to see everyone who joined us. Um, so, you and I already met two, mon two months ago when we spoke the for the first time about your business, the Inner Workout, uh, which is a uh, personal development training. And the previous time you told me that your business was founded uh, basically at, before, just before the lockdown. And you Into the had, lockdown. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So maybe you will, you will say a few words about that. And uh, one of the things you mentioned is that you immediately had to, uh, to move from the in-person trainings, which you just developed, onto online trainings. And there was a lot of development done with the community and... And we finished the conversation basically thinking, so what is going to happen now that the lockdown is lifted? And that's where I would like to start. I think let's do a little introduction of uh, the inner workout. What is it? And, you know, so that people on the, on the live stream can, can catch up. Uh, yeah, let's start with that. So the inner workout is a gym uh, for personal and social development. So these are places in which you can practice your way of connecting to yourself and to each other. And we do that um, in different sessions. Normally it takes about 90 minutes of session in which you come and then uh, connect to each other, share whatever is living within you right now. So questions or challenges you're facing right now and other people listen to you and then you also switch and you practice openly listen and share clean feedback with other people. And in this way, we build very close and intimate connections, even with strangers. That's the... All right, and, and, that's, and that's very important, especially now with the, well, it was the lockdown and still the pandemic is going on. I think the establishing the connection with people is one of the key challenges in, in, this, new, um, in this new environment. So uh, tell me, we finished on thinking, so what's going to happen? Are you only going to stay online with your community, which is also in, in Netherlands, in Israel, in uh, where else? I think there were a few countries, right? In Germany, a lot, and then some other countries, but these are the three main countries, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and you said that going now into the uh, in-person training, again, in the physical space might be a bit of a challenge. So what happened? Uh, in these two months? Maybe before, if I may, I want to share one thing I learned recently that can help us later frame the conversation. Um, I think as a starting entrepreneur, your immediate urge would be to, well, it's very, how would I say that? You don't know a lot, 
And there are many uh, things that you don't know in your business and you still need to develop and learn. And on the other hand, you always want to communicate a very successful image of yourself because you are afraid that if you would appear confused and uh, insecure, nobody would want to do business with you. And I think for me, as, as, as one of the co-founders, it was always a challenge or it is still a challenge. How can I be honest about what I'm doing and my current position and still you know, communicate the relative success that they have. And I think um, for me, it stood out even more because in the inner work of the practice is to be very honest and just show up as you are and appear with whatever challenges you're facing now instead of trying to communicate some very successful image of yourself. So this looking at what is happening in the sessions and how powerful it is just to be honest and communicate openly about yourself and how much progress it can help you make and how much connections and willingness to help and compassion it generates with others. And then looking at myself, communicate about my business with other people, I said, hey, maybe I can use the same principle, the same uh, thing I'm preaching for and, and promoting in the world when I communicate about the businesses. So I'm sharing all this story because what I realized recently in the past few weeks is that the more honest I am about where I stand right now with my business, including all the blind spots that they still have, the more I can move faster and the more uh, help I actually get instead of just trying to be super successful in areas which, if, where I'm not yet. So yeah, absolutely. Just, just to just to say that I, I really admire that approach. I think it's I think for everyone who joined us on the lockdown economy interview specifically, it, it's it's quite um, an, an achievement um, that people can share their stories honestly. And in these times, nobody got it figured out. And I think it's indeed very brave that you can just step up and you say, well, this is the things that I don't know yet, but I'm happy to share. And maybe there's somebody else out there knows already how to solve them. So uh, don't let me interrupt you. You, you were gonna, uh, you were gonna uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the, the transition from the lockdown to the opening of Amsterdam and how it affected your business. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for allowing me to take this detour and now back to, back to the root. Um, yeah. So it was a challenging time. Speak about honesty. I mean, trying to figure out the transition back to face to face and also realizing that there are so many things happening online already in the area of personal development and connections that um, maybe we had a relative advantage at the beginning, you know, launching quite quick and, and then creating that. But then over time, yeah, there were bigger players in the field that stepped into that and had as well free offers and different beautiful things. So on one hand, on the online offer, it felt that it what we offered was not enough or could develop further. And then how to transition back to face-to-face -face was also difficult because what I perceive is that there is already a threshold. I mean, if I would invite you to speak about your challenges with complete strangers, it might be already scary. Plus, if you would add to that all this uh, fear from the pandemic and would you be, you know, is it safe enough? And can you actually go out of home and, and join a session somewhere in, in a space? So adding these fears on each other makes the threshold actually higher. Well, that's how I make sense of it. So it was difficult and it took us a really long time during summer to build again a momentum. Now we we see more and more people joining also the physical session. So I hope we will see this trend continues and well, at least and, linearly. Well, it's good to hear that, you know, you came out from the space where, you know, it was it was very quiet and then you build the momentum. But I think there's, the logical question would be, um, how does the regulations, how do the regulations of the Netherlands affect you and your business model? Because as I understand, they don't recommend people more, uh, to, to gather more than six, uh, you know, six people in a group. And so are you, are you trying to balance on the, on the edge of six or how does it work? Uh, well, so the only time we had more than six people, we could play around. I mean, we, we were creative and still following the regulations. So we invited everyone to, the, to a main room, large enough when it was safe. And then 
the actual work, the actual workouts, any hour happens in small groups of three. So you would send, we just send people to different rooms in groups of three to do the workout and then back to the main room to share about their learning and close off. So in this sense, it is working. Um, yeah, and I guess, well, I hope that at some point we'll need to deal with the question, yeah, what do we do with this uh, 20 people that want to join the session, but uh, we're not there yet. All right, and so what about your online sessions? Because you said that with, with online, you had free sessions done uh, in uh, Dutch, in English, in Hebrew, and mm -hmm. it was quite successful. Well, as, as far as your story went uh, three months ago, two months ago, um, did you stop that completely or are you still continuing in collaboration in hybrid? Uh, we continue in hybrid. Um, well, one thing we realized that we, I guess as, as many startups, we uh, branched out to many different directions very quickly. And then we realized, well, it's time to start choosing and, and see where we really want to focus. So for example, language wise, we just focused on the English session for now. And we say, well, I mean, well, that would be the common ground also for the Hebrew and the Dutch. Um, yeah, so this one thing we did. And the other thing is that we focused a lot, maybe, I mean, following your last question from, from our, the last interview on further developing our methods. So we did that a lot also, developing and testing live in the sessions and created much more different, uh, well, different workouts within the sessions that were offered. So if we look back two months ago and now we have much more developed and, and beautiful offer, which I can honestly, well, I love it and, and I really believe in it. So maybe this is the part when I'm, when I do feel confident and, and happy about it. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And I'm, I'm sure that if people are coming, there is definitely value in it. And so I was, I was wondering about the people. So what do you notice in the customers, in the general mood, in the atmosphere, how do they react to to your offers? How do they react to what is happening? Uh, maybe not during the session, but you know, to get people in the room. You know, how do people react on your engaging? Um. So, those that answer share that it is very stressful before you join. So, I realize, and I mean, I. And I understand that, that it can be very stressful. So if you read all the communication and, and realize that you're actually going to actively share your challenges with other people and be just out there without any protections and without any, you know, mask, it can be scary. So I see that, yeah, I see that a lot before sessions that people are very, uh, well, yeah, scared or, or stressed out from what is going to happen. And there is always at the end a relief uh, so, so it's a it's a very common process that they see, especially for the first session. And do they come back? You know, the people that you get for one session, do they come back, or you just need to new people every time? Um, yeah, I would say more than fifty percent come back. And actually, those that showed the highest levels of stress before are those that come back normally afterwards. So there is there is some link there before, yeah, like as much exciting it is before, and then the, it, it leads normally to, to people who appreciate that more and want to, uh, yeah, to join again. Well, that's good to know. I mean, 50% comeback rate, that's excellent for any business. And, um, and so what challenges are still remaining uh, for your business model, for you and your co-founders right now? That's a very good question. And I guess there's a long answer there. So. Um, I would say, so if, if I define the area of confidence in the product or that I'm really happy about and love and, and see the positive impact of it, then I would say all the rest, you know, how to turn it into a business is a big question mark. So it's about building partnerships. Um, well, we started with Sun, we had a partnership with Baxter Building where we offered the sessions and, and now a new partnership with Roots and Wings. It's a beautiful studio in Amsterdam. Um, so building more and more partnerships instead of just trying to do everything ourselves alone, that's would that would be one one direction. And another within partnerships is also building partnerships with companies. So we are in conversations with a few companies offering in-house in a workout. Same way as you would offer yoga sessions in the office, you can also offer 
dialogue and listening session in the office that you take a break and then really connect with your colleagues. So we have a few conversations there and nothing mature yet. So it's just, uh, yeah, checking, checking the water. So that would be another area of, that we want to grow into and not exactly sure how yet. But that's, that's definitely a promising area, I'm sure, because uh, people who spend a lot of time outside of the office now have to come back and spend time with their colleagues. And, you know, if it wasn't easy before, I think now is, is even more challenging. So I'm sure there is definitely a gap uh, for what you are offering. And you said that in this two months, you have uh, significantly improved the methodology. And I participated in one of the online sessions that you gave um, I'm curious to hear, so what is that that you really love about your, uh, your, your methodology or your, your offering right now? Um, I really love the way it creates very, very strong connection. So what I see, well, I experience it myself, of course, you know, that sometimes I can meet a new, complete new face or whatever it is, on online or offline, someone that I completely, I don't know, random person from the street. And then within 90 minutes, I feel that I know them, you know, more than I know some of my best friends because we've really been to, you know, we touched the core question that this person is holding right now. And also I, I was able to share what I'm holding right now. So, and maybe like a funny story is sometimes that people leave the session and then, you know, after whatever, crying and really feeling connected and then, well, um, what was your name again? And then, so this, uh, that you feel super, super connected, but not in a normal way of going through all these small talks and what are you doing for a job and whatever, but really go directly to what keeps you busy right now, where's your pain, how can I support you in that? And then afterwards build all the rest around it. So I really like to see this impact on, on the way people are connecting to each other. That's a beautiful, uh, that's a beautiful example. Yeah, indeed, uh, sometimes, it's very rare that uh, we can go beyond small talk in a normal in a normal conversation, right? So, what is the future holding for your company? So, do you have any contingency plan in case something doesn't work out? You know, do, do you have any ideas on, on the next few months? Um, so, probably next to growing both in B two C and B two B it will be also building well, infrastructure that will allow us to grow. So having more facilitators that can hold sessions as, as we want them to be held. Uh, so really training and, and bringing in more facilitators for that and, and being prepared for this moment. This is one, another focus area for us. Um, yeah, and growing, I would say that in general, that, that is the, the big task for the coming month. All right, and so you're not afraid uh, by by the second way of lockdown that people might not be. Uh, I, I, do you have a plan for that? Because I mean, I have to ask, right? Because there is a lot of um, talks about not just the stricter regulations, but actually people being locked down again because they keep going around and spreading the virus. I mean, maybe that's not so good. Um, mm -hmm. Despite the excellent, you know, the connection feeling which we also need for our mental health. Um, so, is there is there anything in uh, in store for that uh, for that uh, scenario? You mean if we completely don't have anything to yes. do? And, if if and no, the, if you completely uh, if you completely have to stop the 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 face the face to face session session. Oh, that that so right now we are the focus is 50-50 face to face and 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 online sessions. So in this area, I'm not very concerned and um, so also the, the conversations we're having co with companies is a lot about holding online sessions with them because most companies are still working from home so in terms of the the channels the medium that we're using i'm, I'm not concerned and um, what will happen if no one would need our services then probably we need to look for somewhere something else to do that actually add value to someone so but i you know, as, as an no, but let's, let's, let's hope let's hope that somebody will yeah, yeah I meant more for the yeah. lockdown I didn't mean you yeah. know it, it's clearly that you have a wonderful proposition and people are responding well to it and they're coming to your sessions so mm -hmm. you know I just hope that you will find a way 
in uh, to the to the company to the corporate environment where you can also enable the connection between people who who really need it to to work effectively and yeah. and maybe somebody who's watching this or who will be watching this later uh, can can you know uh, reach out to you and arrange something to try right so maybe yeah. you would like to say something to to those people you know to to somebody who will be watching it later or right now um yeah a, a call to action well if you or the company you're working for are interested in building real connections and help colleagues to really connect to each other on a personal level and help each other in whatever challenges they're facing right now then i would love to have a conversation with you i'm really good at drinking coffee with people and also yeah have a pilot with your company so you could really feel for yourself the value of the inner workout. Excellent. I'm very happy that, you know, this time we didn't forget to invite people to actually reach out to you and, and try the session. And uh, so you still, you still do some of the sessions for free, right? Yeah. The, some of the face to face. So we want to reach to more client, more uh, yeah, individuals. So we offer some of the face to face sessions for free. Well, I, however it works, I, I hope that people can book a try, try out uh, with you and, and just see how it feels to have the inner workout. And uh, I thank you very much for being here with me tonight, uh, Amir. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us to, to listen and to watch. Um, please spread the word, help us. You know, this is lockdown economy and we are trying to help entrepreneurs all over the world to overcome the pandemic by you know, bringing them into spotlight, asking them what are their challenges, asking them what are their solutions so that we can all learn from each other. And, you know, it's becoming a global movement. We already are in Mexico. We prepare in Spain and Turkey. And we already are in Romania. So we are looking for volunteers who want to host interviews like that also in many other countries. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me. If you would like an inner workout session for yourself, then reach out to Amir. I will post his details somewhere around this video. So stay tuned and we will see you next week, I guess. Bye. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you for listening Bye. and watching. Thank you.